This is a tutorial on the swatches panel in Illustrator. So for organizing, just a couple quick things. If you have a lot of unused swatches, like old colors that you cycled through and you want to delete them, you can click the hamburger button and click select all unused. And this selects all of the swatches that are not applied to any artwork in your document. So you can just click and drag those to the trash. You can also create groups or folders. You can name the group, so you can just say, say my colors. Now I can grab whatever swatches I want, drag them down into the folder, or I can select the swatches and then click the folder and it'll automatically add those. I'll just say my colors two. And it, so it adds all the selected swatches there. So the one catch is you can't add gradients or pattern swatches into folders, but any other colors you can organize into your folders. So you maybe noticed also there's three types of swatches besides the gradient and pattern. Um, there's these swatches with the white corner and the dot, the swatches with just the blank white corner, and the solid square swatches. So the ones with the dot are spot colors. So that means it's referencing a color from a color book. So in this case, it's, a, it's from a Pantone book. Um, so these are typically used for things like metallic inks or neons, or if you're screen printing, uh, it's things that are not gonna be reproduced in CMYK um, or RGB. So the other types of swatches are both process colors which is, like I said, it's just CMYK or RGB, just these mixtures of colors. And that's how you're gonna typically print on like a home printer, we'll print CMYK. Um, so these swatches with the white corner are global process colors. So that just means um, that you can name them and they'll be treated like a spot color. So if I select this spot color, rather than showing me like RGB values or CMYK values, it'll show the name of the Pantone number. And then I can also turn this slider down and it'll create a tint of that color. So the global process color is the same. It doesn't show me the RGB values. It shows me the name that I gave it and it gives me the slider to, to change the tint. So if I select this normal spot or this normal process color, like I said, it'll just show the actual RGB values. Um, so one reason I love using global swatches whenever I can is it's just easy to organize your colors and it's really easy to update. So this royal color, so I named it royal. If I want to update the color, I can just double click on the swatch. And if I click preview, I can actually update the color and it'll show me what the new color is on these objects that I applied. And actually I'm going to scroll over. You can see it updates all of the objects with this royal swatch applied. So you see I've got these objects over here and this one, and then it even updates if it's a color that's used in a gradient. So if you are using your global colors consistently, it can make updating your colors really fast. Um, so the other way you can use these global colors is rather than saying this is my royal blue color or this is my pink color, is using this illustration I made Rather than saying this is turquoise, I just named it nodes. So each one of these nodes, I don't know what color I want, but I know that I want them all the same color. And same with these lines. So this line is named lines.main, or the color swatch applied to that line. And this one is named lines.secondary. Uh, and then you can see I used that same nodes color in this uh, pattern texture in the background. So if I want to update this to gold, then I can find my gold swatch over here. If I click and drag, then it'll reorder, but if I hold down option, it'll then highlight a swatch that I drag it over. So I can drag it over this turquoise one, hold option, let go, and it updates all of the objects using this nodes color. It'll update to that new color, keeps the name of your swatch, so it's still organized the way you want, but now all of your objects are updated to that new color. So. I'll just do that with, I'll use this blue spot color and I'll update lines.main and I will use this pink spot color for lines.secondary. So now you can see it's using this spot color as the, 
is the actual color, but it keeps my name that I gave it. Um, and this also works if you were to, if I duplicate this circle, if I want to change this gold to the pattern swatch that I have applied here, then I can drag the pattern swatch, hold option, and drop it over the nodes swatch. And it'll ask, replace the color swatch with the pattern, say yes. Now everywhere that I used that nodes color, it replaces with the pattern. And it actually, I didn't think about this, it kind of messed it up because I was using the nodes color inside that pattern swatch. So typically it would keep that color that you had applied, but I kind of confused it there. Um, anyway, so uh, just one last quick thing to show how I got these Pantone colors. You can open up different swatch libraries with this library button on the bottom left. So it's got this long list. If you just go into color books, these are all the most common color books. I typically use Pantone Plus Solid Coated. If you have a Pantone book, then just try and find whatever uh, matches the name of your actual book, and that will give you the most accurate uh, accurate colors if you deliver to a printer. So if I select uh, solid coated, it'll pull up this swatch list. So you can just click and any color you click on, it'll add it to your local swatch library in, in your open document. If there's a specific color you're looking for, so if I want to find Pantone 135 again, then you should have a search bar. If not, click the hamburger menu and just click show find field. And you can just type in 135 and it'll pull up any swatches that match that. So maybe you're trying to remember, I know I had a swatch that was 17 something. You can just type in 17 and that'll narrow it down a little bit. You can search for it there. You can also change the view to, instead of small thumbnail, you can switch to a list view. You can scan by name there. So there's a few ways to search for colors there. Uh, but that's it. So if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching.